Hello, and welcome to the House Geeks Real Estate Show. Why not hang out with us for the next few minutes and learn the smarter way to buy and sell homes? Uh, you can also check out our website if you want to dive into these topics a little deeper and check out a bunch of other informative videos, and you can find that address below. Um, today we'll be talking about a grab bag of real estate, just a bunch of topics that we've put together that we'll be exploring a little more in depth. I have a feeling there's going to be some ranting going on <laughs> things. and some exciting news, too. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for the exciting news. I am also excited for the exciting news. <laughs> You can also check out our YouTube page. I think there's about 100 informative videos on there as well. But on the website, you can get to the YouTube page from there. Looking for new locations to hold our class. If you have any suggestions of restaurants around town that have private rooms that uh, we can utilize. Um, we've been getting our class sizes keep growing, yes. and we're outgrowing some of the venues that we've been going to. Um, so we're happy to bring some some business around uh, town to, to restaurants that would like that. So if you have any suggestions, please type in the comments. Um, yeah, looking for new places, uh, hoping for our next class to be in the North Metro. So any suggestions up there would be great. For the mics. One of these days. Yeah. All right. This is good. Very good. Ready? Yep. Welcome to the House Geeks Real Estate Show, sponsored by Bricks Real Estate, I Loan Home Mortgage, James Tolson with Country Financial, and Bricks Real Estate. I'm Kirk Duckwall. Joining me is Chad Vandalot, and we are the House Geeks. If you have any questions for us, give us a call at 612-207-5388. Again, 612-207-5388. Five three eight eight. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home or just want to keep track of one of your biggest financial transactions, be a house geek with us for a little while. Today, we're going to be kind of doing a grab bag of real estate, just some different real estate news, trends, just some stuff I wanted to talk about with everyone. Um, yeah, things that uh, are going on in the market. So, um, yeah, also... Follow us on our Facebook page. Hi, Facebook people that are watching. Uh, follow us on our Facebook page. Just type in uh, House Geeks. Look for the little house and glasses. There you can see us record live. Also, you can see upcoming uh, classes, um, events, uh, funny photo Friday, all sorts of stuff. Um, and check out our website as well, where we have tons of great videos. There you can subscribe to our YouTube page. Um, and we also have the new version of the Smart Home Buyer book that's going to be there. We're going to talk more about that a little later in the show is one of the things I wanted to talk about. Some great information in that. Uh, and that is a free book. And we'll get into how to get that later. Okay, uh, first off, we are seeing, uh, for the people that follow this show regularly, you've kind of heard me talking about the market being a little slower this year. And even if uh, you recollect like October, November, a whole lot slower <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, than it was just you know, earlier in the season. And we've been kind of going 10 months now of sh slower showing activity. And, you know, talk to most real estate agents uh, that are full time and they would probably tell you they experienced roughly the same thing. Um, but about a week ago, um, I started to notice this shift. 
And people who watch the show know that uh, I follow that showings per listing per week. And I, I basically keep track of Minneapolis, St. Paul, and then I, I take a look at a few different suburbs. And the suburbs had been tracking a little bit better than the cities themselves for a while now, but still behind last year. And then about two weeks ago, the suburbs started tracking better than the previous mm. year. And I mean a whole lot better, <laughs> like upwards of 25% better wow. as far as activity. So a really big jump in just two week period of time. Um, and it, it, it's interesting because last year <laughs> with that late snowstorm, the, the activity started to actually drop after the snow melted. And so most of the buyers had purchased this year opposite effect. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if the, um, well, I shouldn't say uncharacteristic weather because Minnesota is always uncharacteristic weather, but we <laughs> did have a lot of snow and some rain, you know, just kind of that maybe slowed up the spring market a little bit. But we had the then, same thing last year, yeah. right? Remember that it was 15 inches of snow, almost same week, everything. Yeah. But it, completely different reaction. I mean, so, you know, it's uh, the market stayed slower and then really exploded as soon as that snow melted off, which I would normally go, yeah, that seems yeah, right. That makes sense. That makes sense, right? But last year, it didn't follow that trend at all. Um, so what, what we've seen is this, this flip in the last two weeks. Now, Minneapolis and St. Paul are still down over last year's number. I've been trying to figure out exactly um, what the cause is. It, it does look like inventory is the, the issue. It, it appears that there's about 100 more listings in that median sale price range in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Hmm. Okay. And so when you're talking the difference between – you know, 280 listings and 380 listings, that's a big percentage difference that were, was in that two to 400 category at the same time. So I believe that's the culprit. <laughs> and that's why the showings per listing are still down there. Uh, I, I think once those start to dissipate, um, we're going to see that shift across the board. So, yeah, I mean, the market's getting a lot better <laughs> than it was four or five, six weeks ago. Um, and I'm, I'm having to revise my thinking of the long term because I figured we were going to follow last year's trend of, you know, peak out even before the snow melted, and it's not the case this year. Mm. So we're definitely looks like we're going to be better. Um, interest rates may also be <laughs> one of the contributing factors to the market moving a lot better. If you look back at interest rates last October, November, you were sitting a heck of a lot higher, um, you know, three quarters of a percent higher than we are right now. So it could have been those rising interest rates that slowed down the year last year late as they dropped off mid-year. That has also helped um, the buyers kind of come out of the woodwork. And the so the Interest rates basically follow along with the ten-year Treasury yield. Basically, if Treasuries, um, you know, bonds are going up, the interest rates will go down, and, and vice versa. So, when looking at interest rate forecasts, that's one of the things that I look at. Um, so, the long term is just a you know a couple tenths of a percent shift over the next six months. So. Hopefully, rates stay relatively the same. If they go up, probably not more than a quarter point, I would think. Um, that should really help affordability with uh, the rising home prices, as we've been seeing. Well, yeah. And, you know, even with the slower market activity that we experienced for almost 10 months, home prices still went up 6.5%. Keep in mind, average appreciation is 4.5%. So another year of above wow brings it back around to those buyers who are sitting oh i want to keep saving i want to keep saving now, i always say buy a home when you're ready don't rush into it you don't want to be house poor you don't want to do something uh that that's a mistake but go in with full knowledge 
that standard appreciation in the meal, median sale price range in the Twin Cities means at a minimum, typically, you have to save $11,000 a year just to break even for that following year. I think the example that we showed in our class, it was over 15000 last year, just in the median sale price yeah, range. I think that's right. Yeah. Um, okay, so the market's moving fast. Things are going. Why not try to sell your house on your own, right? It's got to be so easy. This is, a, I mean, talking about one of the worst times you could do this kind of thing. If you think a house is a house and it will just sell, then you're disregarding all the s statistics that show that marketing works, quality marketing works, exposure works, having professional people that do marketing instead of trying to do it on your own works. Why do you think big corporations hire marketing firms? Um, it, it's because it works. And so when you have a market that's moving fast, um, there's other things that come into play um, as well. If you're in a multiple offer situation and you're doing that for sale by owner thing, hey, I can sell it on my own. Yeah, you know what? Go out. You can. You can. Tr <laughs> trust me, you'll get offers, right? I can sell a, a Ferrari for 500 bucks too. When the market's moving fast and everybody's jumping, you know, yeah. But how do you handle when you get an escalation clause that's FHA and they have an escalation clause of $5,000 over? By the way, if you don't know what an escalation clause is, this would be a time to be contacting an agent. Uh, but if you have an escalation clause, it's 5000 over FHA, 3.5% down. And then you have a conventional that is um, – $2,000 over 20% down, and then you have a portfolio loan, 20% down, uh, no inspection, cash buyer asking price uh, with an inspection. How do you weigh out which one you're going to go with? Which one is the, 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 the least risk? Um, if your head is going to cash offer, you actually are in the wrong spot because statistically, in a faster moving market, cash offers back out at a, a higher rate than somebody that has a higher down payment conventional. So one reason why for sale by owner in a faster market is not a great idea. I have a couple more reasons I would love to get into, which I will after a commercial break. Um, and we'll even talk about the percentage of money. And then we'll get into some other fun stuff as well. You're listening to the House Geeks Real Estate Show on AM 950. Any questions for us, give us a call, 612-207-5388. Again, 612-207-5388. We'll be right back. This is where the people on the radio listening get to listen to Chuck Mangione, <laughs> right? And, and I really wish I was hearing Chuck Mangione through these headphones. Yeah. Um, there you go. Ready? Yep. You know what? I'm going to check Facebook, see if anybody has any questions or comments. And Welcome back to the House Geeks Real Estate Show on AM 950. If you're thinking about buying or selling a house or just want to keep track of one of your biggest financial transactions, why not be a house geek with us for a few more minutes? If you're thinking about buying or selling a home and you have any questions or are looking for help, please give us a call after the show at 612-207-5388. Again, 612-207-5388. Happy to help with that. Also, check us out online anytime at housegeeks.com. 
All right, today we are just doing a grab bag of real estate, just j chatting about a few different things. We were talking about the for sale by owner, why it's not a great idea in a fast moving market. We we're talking about some of the paperwork regarding multiple offers um, and where that can be an issue. Um, you know, just, yeah, um, incomplete paperwork. That's another issue. Uh, rep representing yourself, do you know all the forms that you need? Do you need a lead based paint addendum? Uh, are you doing a seller's property disclosure? Does it make sense to do an as-is addendum in the way that you're selling it? Um, you know, is it an FHA buyer? Are you including the proper forms that are required? Do you have the lead-based paint pamphlet that you're <laughs> sending out? Are you giving the radon disclosures? If these things are popping off in your head and you're doing a for sale by owner right now, you may want to give us a call. We'd be happy to help uh, clear that up. Um, but, yeah, so incomplete paperwork. This is one of the things that we see with uh, for sale by owners uh, regularly. Um, yeah, and understanding the, the, the different types of financing and how they may or may not benefit you as a seller. So uh, short and sweet of the for sale by owner in a fast-moving market. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, that being said, I'm not saying that, you know, a family to family transaction, friend to friend transaction, neighbor to neighbor. I see that all the time. I help with the paperwork on that kind of stuff all the time. That's quite normal. But when you're dealing with strangers and, you know, especially in a situation where you, you don't know the person you're working with, you really want to get professional advice mm -hmm. on that. Um, and even with a neighbor or a friend or a family member, maybe get some advice on <laughs> what you need to do. Um, okay. Here's another one. Um, this time of year, open houses, it's nice out. It's beautiful. A house is an open house. Sellers, don't be afraid of open houses. Nosy neighbors are your friends. <laughs> uh, we were actually just discussing this um, on our Bricks Real Estate Facebook group um, this morning and l last night and this morning that, you know, they're, they're so good and so helpful that you may want to even hold a pre-open house mm -hmm. for neighbors prior to uh, the regular open house, give them a private invite to come over. And here's why. Neighbors account for a fair percentage of the, um, if you track back, how did somebody find out about the listing? Neighbors. Wow. Neighbor tells a coworker. Neighbor tells a family member. Neighbor tells a friend. Neighbor talks to somebody driving by the house because they were curious, waves them down. We've seen it, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, waves them down and starts chatting about it. If that neighbor is informed, they're your advocate, right? They want to know. Mm -hmm. Let them know. Um, they will help you out. They will help you sell your house. Tell you, though. The way the market is, you don't much of a chance to get open houses these days. Right, right. <laughs> Things sell so quick. Um, all right. So that's my opinion on neighbors and open houses. Um, new feature to our MLS system, the uh, coming soon. This is great. I've been going through uh, a lot of my searches and updating their search to include coming soons. Um, and... Uh, so good, good opportunity to reach back out. But this is also a great opportunity to, um, you know, learn about properties before they actually are showing available. And how is this beneficial as a seller? Well, you get to do something that you didn't really ever get to do before, which is is get your property out there. Have people start booking showings a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, a month ahead of time, and, and setting it up for when that property actually is going to come to market. So you can get that snowball moving um, and uh, kind of have come out of the, that gate running. You don't have to wait that day or two after you come on the market to start seeing the activity pick up. So this can be, this can be a good little option if you have the time. Um, I will say, you know, the market's moving so fast right now. You know, if it's like, oh, should I do coming soon for a week and then put it on? No, just put it on, <laughs> right? Um, unless you're not ready. If it's going to take time to get it clean, get to get it staged, perfect. That's the perfect opportunity. That is the perfect opportunity. Um, you know, let's see. Um, another thing with um, pre-list uh, coming out. Um, 
especially with like your Zillow's or your Facebook groups, what a great opportunity if you know you have time to play around with different prices, mm. right? And and see what the market, how the market uh, reacts to that. Um, because, you know, with those, with uh, uh, Zillow and Facebook, I mean, there isn't a history on that. So you can try different things out. Uh, got myself thinking here as I'm just chatting is, is um, I don't know if there's a history of the coming soon <laughs> prices in the MLS. I don't know either. I, I'm going to check into that. <laughs> Worthwhile knowing there. Um, all right. We have a new version of our book that uh, is out. So uh, if you've watched our Facebook, you've seen us have copies of the book. I think I have a copy hiding here somewhere in my my grab bag of real estate. <laughs> Let's see. Um, or maybe not. Yep, just go digging. Don't have it. Um, so give, them all, give them all away. You can go to the website yes. and check it out. Yes. So the Smart Home Buyer book, it's a guide through the, the whole buying process. And, and, and if you're a first-time buyer, this is going to be super beneficial. But if you're a second-time buyer, this is going to be super <laughs> beneficial. If you're a third-time buyer, guess what? Probably going to be super beneficial. Um you know, we went in and took the combined experience of, you know, you, myself, other agents within the brokerage um, who've been been doing it. I mean, yeah, I mean, combined, we probably have 30 years <laughs> or more of, of experience out there uh, that to put this this book together. But, you know, we really wanted to dive in and not just be like, well, the first step is to go shopping for a mortgage. After you determine the mortgage you would like, you want to talk to a real estate agent. <laughs> you should interview three real estate agents before choosing one that is a good fit for you. Okay, that's just condescending. Okay, most people know, mm -hmm. yes, I need to get a mortgage. Yes, I need to get a real estate agent. So we got into the tough things. How does closing cost work? Like exactly. And how do you incorporate those in your offer and in your loan so not only do you understand them, but the seller will understand what you are doing and what you are offering. Um, that you are um, you know, shopping for a mortgage in the correct way, right? So what do I mean by this? You're not hopping online, uh, going to websites, and just rate shopping. Right or looking at billboards and so they, well, I saw that rate. That's what I want. This is what we've been taught as consumers. This is what the advertisers want us to believe. This is not the smart way to shop for a mortgage. Right? Smart way is to take into consideration the term, the mortgage insurance, the closing costs and discount points, the, the down, down payment. payment. Right. And then doing apples to apples comparisons, not apples to oranges comparisons. Lenders love for you to do apples to oranges because then they can fool you, right? So it's getting into all those different things. How to look at houses online and know really what is a good deal and how to find the best deals that are out there. Um, you know, we get into the in the new book, and one of the reasons we did the revision was um, – we gave an in-depth explanation on foreclosures, short sales, um, talking about who are these maybe better for than others, um, estate sales, uh, how to dig in finding red flags, and then we included a whole, whole, way more in-depth, um, way more in-depth checklist of what to look for when you're out at a property. All right, well, we're, we're to the end of the show. If you would like a copy of this new book, email us at contact at housegeeks. For those on Facebook, I'm circling somewhere where the contact at House Geeks is down there. Uh, contact at House Geeks, we're happy to send you out a link to that, that newest version. We do have the old version on our website, not the new one yet. So, uh, yeah, 10 more pages of additional content that will make you the smart home buyer uh, when you get out there. If you have any calls for us after the show, you can give us a call at 612-207-5388. Again, 612 207 Five three eight eight would love to help you with buying or selling a house or just answer any of your real estate questions. Take care and have a great week.
my Facebook. Reach out to us for that book. 